We are now live. I'll wait for John to come back in and let us know when we should start. Oop, looks like Leslie's showing up. Hey, sorry, I'm here at the time I said I was going to be. <laughs> no, you're perfect. You're here. Now, there's another one. Michael's iPhone is coming. Who would that be? Anybody have a Michael that's kind of coming in on an iPhone? What does it say a number? No, it's just Michael's iPhone is connecting to audio. Mike to Chanel. I just don't know who that might be. It's our very own Mike, isn't it? Mike, yeah. Mike our... Mike oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, of course. One, two, that's right. There was one missing. <laughs> Good thing he can't hear us yet. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do one more thing for my day job. I'll be right back. I'll stay here, but I'm just not going to, I'll be distracted for a minute before we get started. All right, Norm, so the recordings are all ready to go. All right. Um, so if you need me, just say my name and I'll be back. Okay, John, thank you. You're welcome. All right, yeah. so I'm ready to, ready to start our North Pro Historic District Commission meeting. In order to start, I have a, I have some reading I have to do about the COVID and, and the like, and why we're, why we have this open meeting done on video. So, I'm Norm Corbin. I'm the chair of the North Pro Historic District Commission. This open meeting of the Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the, trans, the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, the town of Northborough has been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a public, publicly accessible physical location. All members of the Historic District Commission are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows the Historic District Commission to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We'll follow through the only agenda. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northboro Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Hey Mike, you're, uh, you're muted. So first, I'm going to make sure we're all here. Uh, so I'm here. Mike DeShano. I am here. Excellent. Leslie Harrison. Here. Bruce Shoup. Here. Brian Smith. Here. Billy Milton. Here. Brian Swanson. Here. Very good. So we are all here. So we are ready to roll. Yes. We'll start with the prior meeting minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review the meeting minutes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they look fine to me. Can I have a motion? Uh, what was the date on them again? Sorry. Uh, wait a minute, I might actually have them here if I did this right. July 15th. Yes, July 15th, that's correct. I move that we, uh, at, uh, that we accept the minutes of the July 15th meeting. Okay, a second. Second. All right, so now I have to do roll call. I'm sorry, who, who seconded? It was seconded, seconded by Brian Smith. Brian, okay, thank you. All right, uh, roll call. So Mike DeShano. Uh, approved. Leslie. Approved. Bruce. 
Uh, I abstained because I was not at the last meeting. Very good. I was checking to make sure we're doing this right. <laughs> Brian Smith. Here. All right. Uh, Millie Milton. Approved. Brian Swanson. Approved. All right. So we have one down on the agenda. Excellent. New, excuse me, old business. So um, the cemetery interpretive signs. We've been working on the verbiage regarding the wording to go on the uh, Brigham Street uh, interpretive sign. Uh, Zenya has put some input with Alexandra and Leslie. And today I sent it off to Beth Finch McCarthy because she's really the guru of knowledge of the cemetery. And I want her to make sure with all of our edits that it's still is correct, technically correct. So I got a response from her with a couple of comments. Um, I haven't been able to forward that. But where we are right now is uh, on that sign, we have verbiage that's probably 99% there. And we've decided previously we have a list of burials that uh, Beth Finch McCarthy has found that are either definitely there or probably there. We have a list of that. We have a photograph of one of the old gravestones, and I need, to, I need to get a better photograph of one of the old hand-drawn maps of that gravesite. Um, and that was the information we decided we would put on to the uh, to the uh, interpretive sign for that cemetery. The next step really is to get it all together, and I have to work through the DPW to get quotes and get estimates on uh, a quote on how the job would work. Uh, when we looked at this uh, quite some time ago, uh, we had two options that came out. We, we, there was an online option to purchase it, and there was also one, the, the same people who were, uh, made the signs for us for the cemetery signs, those nice brown cemetery signs that we have. Um, can't think of the name of the company off the top of my head. It's uh, someone in town who owns the company. Crown Trophy? And, no, not Crown. Crown doesn't do this. It's, uh, it's on the CPC. Oh, uh, Andy, expose signs. Yeah, expose signs. So there were two options there. But again, so expose signs and online would be the two that would probably approach quotes to get it designed and built. Now, before, once we finalize the design, we're going to have to vote to agree that that's exactly what we want. I think we have enough information now that we've agreed to, to at least move it into the, get it to the quote stage. Does that make sense? Yeah. That sounds good. Yep. All right. Yep. So that one's moving ahead. Um, I have to comment on Julianne's background. Sorry. Oh, you're just, <laughs> oh, you're just joining us. So she's outside. She's like a local reporter. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the uh, there was a hiccup on the Route 20 historic uh, signage. Uh, I'd say almost three or four months ago, I had sent a small article into the community advocate and somehow it just got misplaced. But now, it, I don't know if you noticed, yeah, you did notice it. Uh, it it's been published last week. Good. So that one's all done. That's great. The Native American sign, uh, that's been installed. I think I sent you a picture of it installed. I have a new photograph with, uh, yeah, how do I how do I get you to see my screen? Uh, it should be at the bottom. Share screen. There's like a green a green square right in the right in the center. Ah, of the bottom. okay. Thank. I, I had it minimum. I didn't have it so I could see full screen. All right. So this is a this is the picture. You see that? Get so there. That's the, that's the trail. Oh, oh, nice. Do you know? Uh, who, does anybody know who that man is? I do not. I do not. He is the retired uh, Nitmunk uh, Indian chief. Oh, oh wow. Walter Vickers. Wow. He's a resident of Northboro. Oh, wow. Um, we what? had him. Uh, Ray LaChance. Ray huh? LaChance was the kids. We had Ray LaChance was the kids. Any of your kids have Ray LaChance as a teacher? Oh, okay. Kids. He's another Native American that was from oh, Northboro. Is he? Yeah. I don't know which tribe, but in any event. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. So anyway, so um, I'm putting together uh, an article about the sign, and uh, I'll use this photograph. And I found another photograph I wanted to use. Um, so I'm, I'm like 90% done. I just need to talk to um, 
Walter, and then find out there's a, the, the tribal leader right now is a woman. And I went on to the Nipmunk website, but they don't have her listed. So I need to talk to him and find out what her name is. I want to acknowledge that the, I think the big thing is that the Nipmunk has a reservation. It's an active tribe and it's, it has a new chief and it's a, it's a woman. And what was his last name? His name is Walter Vickers. Vickers. E-I-C-K-E-R-S. He lives right on South Street. Where's he from? Uh, he lives in Northboro. I don't know if he's grown up in Northboro or how that all works. Hmm. But yeah, he, he, his house is uh, essentially almost across the street from the 135 Park. Okay. And, right. and Norm, where's, where's the sign? The sign. Okay, if you get down... Um, down, down Main Street, street to Bartlett Street. You yep. take it right on Bartlett Street. You go all the way down. You're almost in Marlboro. And right before you get to Marlboro, it crosses the aqueduct. Oh, so, down there. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we got permission from MWRA to install it on their aqueduct trail because that's now a trail. And uh, so they installed it. And then they also gave us permission to put it on their property. So we're pretty. So is it so? When you go past like the FedEx and the Dewey pile and you go down the hill and there's a right turn Cedar Hill Road to go. It's yeah. before Cedar Hill Road. It's before the Cedar Hill, okay. It's where the aqueduct is. It's, and then you, you, it's on the right hand side. So you can, uh, you can there's actually, you can pull off there and, and uh, walk in. It's, it's, only in it's, it's only in maybe 20 feet from the road. The issue was really to put it someplace that's safe because Butler Street is not safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's where that one got. That, Great. That looks awesome. That looks yeah, really that's nice. Good. Yeah. He was thrilled that we had the flag. We put the Nipmuc flag on it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <coughs> so that's nice. done. The article, uh, I'm sorry, I'm almost done with that article. And let's see. CPA, where are we with CPA? Can you fill us in with that, Leslie? We had a request in for town meeting. Yeah, everything got approved. So we get the approval for the National Register nomination for the uh, Howard Street Cemetery. I've already approached DPW to see if we can get that moving along. And uh, they're, doing, they're juggling a lot of balls right now. Um, but I think in short order, we'll be able to get something out. This is, this is a pretty straightforward, uh, it's a pretty straightforward um, proposal to get out. So I'm hoping to get that DPW to get that done in probably uh, next six to eight weeks. That'd be great. Uh, I wanted to spend time tonight on the historic preservation plan. The, I forwarded a spreadsheet with a list of a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me see, I'll pull yep. it up here if you see it this way. Uh, Oh, hey, Norm, you may want to. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now I can do share screen and now I can do this one. How's that? Whoa. Everybody, everybody see that table? Yep. You may want to read it from your own from your own screen, but <laughs> so this was this this list is probably a good five years old or more. You can see a lot of things have been done. I just wanted to get the list out to you as it is so that you could see some of the things that we've done recently and give you an idea of the kinds of things we should do. Um, the, the purpose of this exercise is the master plan. The first thing on the master plan for us is to put together a historic preservation plan. I think the first part of a historic preservation plan is to come up with a list of things we want to preserve. So if I don't expect to get this all done tonight, but what I really want people to look at is what are the big things that we might be missing on this type of list? So for example, the second line item down is uh, the downtown, the local historic district. But the master plan had a lot of other things that they wanted historic preservation on. And um, I'm just trying to see, you know, what role we would play in other committees. There's supposed to be a downtown committee at some point. I don't know when that's gonna happen. Um, so anybody have any ideas of something just we should be considering that we maybe haven't yet?
Nothing jumps to mind. How about you? You probably have all sorts of things well, swirling in your head. <laughs> most of them are on that list. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, there is a, in general, these are kind of specific items. In general, the, the expectation of us is to, to protect more properties. And um, it's hard, but, you know, we, we've already tried to do that by sending out letters to people who own houses built uh, before 1800. Um, so we're trying to do that. We're trying to get people's interest in preservation. So when I look at the list, I'm thinking somehow we need to have an incentive for preservation for historic properties, um, either getting them in the National Register or in a historic district or a preservation restriction on them. All, all real challenging things. Mm. We've been taking the approach of education, which is useful, but it really hasn't hit home yet to some of the old property owners. We should be able to have an impact on uh, Main Street. I think there's, if there's anything that we can have a play a role in is uh, preservation of Main Street, especially the historic section from the center of town heading down to the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we talked nice. about the Civil War Memorial, but I'm not sure that's a priority. We pulled that. Um, it's, it, that's so new. It's not on this list. Uh, it was a cleaning of the Civil War Memorial. I thought uh, I did. I thought I did see that on here. Is it? Well, what, what were you addressing then, uh, Leslie, about War Memorials? No, you were talking about Main Street, so. Yeah. Well, I, I, there's a lot on Main Street. I think we would, I think we would probably be able to be involved in all of it, but certainly the historic part is, is would be key to us, making sure that that stays that way. Um. Is not so much. Is that, is, is, is that uh, you know, when you're talking about the historic part of uh, Main Street, is that, uh, you know, covered in the, in the downtown local historic district? Is that um, considered part, you know, part of that? Or is that an additional, you think? Well, I know back in the 70s, I think it was, there was, someone did try to have a downtown local historic district, but it was primarily the antique homes. It didn't, it didn't, yep. the list that I'd seen started around where 135 South Street comes in, to, then down toward the river. Yep. The part from 135 heading to Dunkin' Donuts is pretty limited what's left that's historical. Yeah, it sure is. Yep. Yeah. But did you see, uh, did you see the cleaning of the... Uh, I thought I did. I don't see it on there now. I'm looking for it. I thought I saw it the other day. Maybe not. <clears throat> I'll write that. that. That one is off the list. Are we, uh, we were going to try to get CPA funding for that. And in the end, we didn't request it because it was too much of an unknown what the cost was. If you remember, we could have it either yeah, $1,000 yeah. or $20,000. I never got yep. a straight answer what the $20,000 cleaning would involve. Um, uh, the, Scott, uh, the DPW director, Scott, had mentioned that he, I think he's for having it cleaned, and if he ever has some extra funds for two thousand dollars, he can get it clean. So we may not even need CPA, but it should be on the list because that's something I think that should be done. In fact, if you look at all the all of the uh, wall memorials in town, they actually could all go for good cleaning. You know, between the stonework and then the. Uh, even the World War One one, you could clean the bra the bronze up pretty nice. So, yeah, maybe there was a reference to it in the minutes, and that's what's triggering. Oh, okay. it but it's not on here, so I'm glad you brought it up. What about the Grange? Is there any news on? That'll come up uh, further down on the new business. Okay. All right. All right. So, for the historic preservation plan. You keep scratching your head and something comes up, just drop an email to me. It's like, oh, we should think about doing this so we can put it on this uh, table. Well, that's why I mentioned Grange was in this context. Ah, save the grain. I wasn't changing the subject. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I have it down here for another reason. <laughs> save the Grange, yeah. Actually, that's a key one. So 
as you come up with other ideas, just hit them off. The, the way this is gonna work is uh, just a refresher on the preservation plan. About six or eight years ago, we asked this, we, we put in for CPA funding for a preservation plan. And the going rate at that time was between 20 and $30,000 for historic preservation plan for the town, which explains why nobody's doing them. None of the towns are doing them. When we spoke to um, a fellow at Mass Historical Commission, a guy used to live in Northboro, uh, Chris, Chris, Chris. Skelly, right? Thank you, Chris Skelly. Uh, he said there are so few historic preservation plans in the state that he would be willing to take even a five or six page report that, that a historic district commission puts together. So this is along those lines. These are the things we think we need to do. And then I think what we had need to add to it is, you know, some of the things that have been done in the past. So it's, it's, a, it's like, a, I'm thinking it's like a five page document. So that's kind of the story for the preservation plan. So what, Norm, I guess a question, you know, Chris is willing to take a, a five or six plan document. What, what does that do for us? Well, the, the question we ha I've had several times from CPA back in the, a few years ago was, well, what are your plans? You know, the, 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 mm -hmm. you, you keep coming to us with things and that's nice, but what's your long-term plan? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think it's just good for us to be, put something together that shows what we're thinking about, what the future would be for, you know, it's, it's a guideline. You don't have yeah. to, it, even I think I put estimated funding and timeframes. I mean, it's just, it's really just to get an idea of what could be done by, by the group. Yeah. Is it, um, is it, uh, is it worth, you know, so, so we're talking about historic districts, uh, you know, in downtown and expanding the meeting house, uh, common district and so forth. Um, is it worth putting on, uh, Perhaps you know some some single home historic districts that aren't downtown or near the meeting house district. You know, I'm thinking of. Uh, you know, I mean, there there are a handful of really old homes scattered around town. Hmm. You're right, and that was why in uh, January or February, that's where we sent out those uh, some twenty letters. And we yeah. got response. We got response response four that had some interest in looking at options for preservation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the single home historic district is a powerful tool. And especially mm -hmm. we saw how Marie had done it, Marie Lieber had done it for her as we have already a case in, an example in town. Yep. The challenge is all of these preservation, all of these preservation options have to be driven by the homeowner. And that's, sure. the challenge. that's really the hard part, educating them and making them feel comfortable and the fact of the matter is one of the reasons we're trying to get our home put on the national register is I never understood how complex the process is. So now that I can understand how complex the process is, at least if I talk to someone who wants to try to do it, I've got, you know, grassroots experience and how mm -hmm. this all works. But, but yeah, single home characteristics are good. If you go back to the, when we had the inventories done on the town, historic properties back in oh, 2008, 2009. Both of those final reports contain lists of, of, of properties they felt should be considered for the National Register. Mm -hmm. And if you go on our website, if you go to the town's website and you go to the Historic District Commission website, there's a page that lists all of the properties that they felt should be considered for National Historic Register. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting ones was schools. They said you can do a... Um, it's not a single house district. It's not a continuum district, but it's like a disjointed district, which they were recommending that all five remaining old schools could be one historic district. Hmm. So then you can, you know, as you can work, so you, you can work it that way. And I think that maybe that's part of it is to go back through some of what we already know where people have already made some recommendations and start to incorporate that here in, in somehow into a hmm. planning document. So maybe the planning document says uh, increase the amount of local historic district properties, and then we have an agenda, an uh, addendum in the back that says these are the properties that have been recommended in the past. You know that kind of. Thing. Yeah, I was. I, I guess I was thinking. You know, maybe along those lines. You know, it. Um, you know, just maybe being a little bit more. Uh, 
targeted, maybe. I mean, at, <laughs> targeted in the positive sense, right? Uh, <laughs> there, there, are, there are a number of <laughs> there are a number of properties that that we would really like to see uh, preserved, um, and so, you know, I don't know. Are there other activities around that 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 could be done to to help educate homeowners or you know, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking, thinking about some more of the individual homes and, and buildings around town. Well, you know, we did start with that list of pre-1800 homes. Um, we could expand the list. You know, that's another option we can be thinking of, expanding the list and, and targeting some more of the homes that were, you know, built prior to 1900 that are significant. But I, I think a good way to start is to refresh our memory is what's on the original list from the, um, from the contractors we had. Because it was a pretty extensive list. Actually, mm -hmm. let me, just for the heck of it, let me see if I can pull it up. Might be a good time to just see what we got here. Now, are you seeing my screen now or not? What do you see on your screen? Yeah, we still see it. Yeah. You're, seeing not, you're seeing that I'm on the Northboro website or are you just looking at the table? Oh, the Excel file. What was that again? We're seeing the Excel file. Okay. You should probably just sharing your window. You can share just a specific window or you can share your whole desktop. Okay, well, let us let me just... Uh, you want to jump around to share your desktop and then you can... Let me first find what I'm looking for and then somebody can guide me on how to get it so that you can all see it. How about that? And... I think you're going to have to unshare and I think you shared just your... Right, right, right. But let, let me just find, let me just see if... I can find what I'm looking for. Okay. <laughs> before I try <before laughs> right. to share it. If I can't find it, we don't have to share it. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right. Uh, got it. All right. So now I have to stop sharing what I was sharing. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And I can go to, go to screen share. Yeah. It's several, like for me, it says screen one, screen two, whatever. Let's see. I think I. This is a. This is the first for me. If this works, are you, are you looking at this list now? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is on our website. Uh, it's the combine. It's combined information from both of the inventories. And so table one is individual properties that they felt should be listed on the national register. So there's one, two, three. The 17 homes, and then there's a couple of other uh, other things, uh, railroad bridge. Uh, just so you know, for Mary, the Mary Goodnow burial site, burial ground. Um, Debbie, who was who was with us before you joined us, Leslie? Debbie. Oh, Deb uh, Deborah. Deborah Como. Deborah Como. Deborah Como. Deborah Como was a big proponent of that. We actually got it to the point where the Mass Historical Commission has has agreed that that site should be on the National Register. Hmm. But we, hmm. so if anybody wants to pick it up and start filling out National Register forms on that site, it's available. We got the thumbs up for that one. So that's a that's kind of a loose end that uh, we haven't really uh, paid attention to. Is so that's table one. Table that two. Uh, is that the uh, Mary Goodnow property? That's the Mary Goodnow uh, burial ground. Yeah, the property you, you take about a trail and you go out back where her memorial is. It's actually her grave site. Hmm. But we got all the permissions to do that. We have the letter that said it's okay. If, um, what's, what it needs is a lot of history information about the, bury, about the, the attack and the like. Okay. Um, can you scroll up again? What's the category of table one? Table one is individual, individual okay. asset. So why is uh, 302 Church Street not on there? I don't know. That was their list. These are little things that probably are missing here and there. That's a, that that's the, a biggie. The hallway? That's a biggie. So that's 302 Church. Thank you for seeing that. And these are these are potential historic districts that they recommended. Um, expanding the Meeting House Common, uh, Town Center, the Boston Post Road. One of the consultants really liked the whole School Street, Summer Street area because there's a lot of older homes in there that are very well kept. 
Um, hmm. Then we have the mill areas, Woodside. If you go down, if, you know, Woodside has a bunch of houses along with the mill. Chapinville still has quite a few homes left from, the factory's gone, but there's still some homes left from the original uh, factories. White Cliffs, the White Cliffs is actually could be a district because it's, there's still three other houses associated with the mansion. That's the word, thematic district. The next one is a historic schoolhouses thematic district. Hmm. And then she thought that we, one of them said they could do something with historic farms. You could do a thematic district with historic farms. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I think a lot of the farms actually are already protected um, through conservation somehow, right? Am, am I right, Leslie? There's a kind of conservation programs for some of the farms and even the golf, one of the golf, or some of the golf courses. They're already protected. So if they're already protected, it might not be very difficult to get them protected in another way as a historic uh, district. So. All right. Um, all I'm trying to do at this point is just start to tickle your brains about things that you could do for the long term. Yeah. So if you think of something, just, just shoot, shoot off an email. That'd be great. Now I'm gonna stop sharing. I know you guys are all back. Actually, the, the, the preservation plan was the thing I wanted to spend the most time on tonight. Thank you for that. New business, <clears throat> uh, 35 Whitney Street. We hired a contractor to put in the nomination documents. It's highly encouraged that you don't try to do it yourself. Um, <laughs> We've already found that out when we tried to do it for the Howard Street Cemetery. They're really nitpickers. And they said it's best to have a consultant do it. So I, we hired a woman, um, Jennifer, Jennifer O'Donnell, I think it is, in uh, Westboro. So she's pulling that together. She said by the end of this month, she'll have a draft that's ready to be sent in for the Mass Historical Commission. It does take two to three years from now. <laughs> it's a long, it's a, there's a long backlog, large backlog. All right, 137 East Main Street. I think we spoke about this uh, two months ago. This is that little yellow, little yellow farmhouse at the corner of East Main Street and then going down into the developments in the back of the over 55 communities that ring in a bell. Is that the one with the, uh, it's got the historic, uh, the, the marker in front of it? The marker is not too far from it. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Say okay. from it or one house down. Yeah. So the current owner, I think I mentioned him last time, is a preservationist. So he's excited to buy this house and do some preservation work. He contacted the town hall because he also wants to do some, I think he wants to add a wing in the back and some patio and, you know, do some landscaping in the back. So he contacted the town hall to find out what the restrictions are because it's an old historic building. Town Hall contacted me and said, what are the restrictions on it? So I emailed them back and I said, unless you're tearing the building down, there are no restrictions at all. He was appalled because he felt that building <laughs> should have restrictions on it. I said, you know, we try to save what we can. And so it was kind of an interesting concept. Usually it's it, it, you yeah. push back. And he's like, what do you mean there's nothing? It's not protected at all? I said, no, unless you want to demolish it. So he was very interesting to communicate with. Mm. Uh, he's going to he's gonna do good things with the property. It's nice. Because I had got at least three or four requ a requests from um, real estate agents trying to understand how that property could be demolished. So they mm. found someone who could save it. And the owner, the previous owner, is still to death. The Collins family, I guess they, they, they've been in there for over four generations. So they were happy that someone would preserve it. So, wow. Good news. That's, that's great. That's yeah. really good. It usually doesn't turn out that way. Uh, it very seldom turns out that way. <laughs> yeah. um, and the other good news is, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with 114 Hudson Street. That's the, um, oh, it's Art and the Duffy family. Are you familiar with oh, yeah. Art Duffy? Yeah, yeah. Art, Art and uh, Tracy Duffy, yeah. Yeah, so they just sold their house. Uh, it took about a year and a half. And the people who bought, I don't know if you've ever been inside this beautiful mini mansion. It's gorgeous on the inside. It was built around 1890 and it's all beautiful woodwork and it's all well maintained. And they found somebody who loves the inside. It's going to keep it up. So nice. last two months we had good news of old homes that are being saved. And That's great. 
Nice. That's great. Yeah, my my uh, my daughter used to be friends with um, with Balin, their their daughter, and uh, she used to talk about how beautiful the house was. Yeah, and, same thing. My son was friends with Connor, <laughs> their son Connor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, they had it as uh, about ten years ago. There was an open. They had uh, the historical society with the library had a uh, open house of homes. I think there were ten or twelve homes that had open houses as a mm. fundraiser. And that, that's the opportunity we had to get in there. It's, like, it's, it's amazing. Uh, before I go on my other list, are there any things that jumping up that you want to add to the new business other list? Trivia night. Oh, trivia night. Okay. How's <laughs> that going? I know you got, I got, you got the Molnar sisters involved. Yeah, come on. I don't want to hear I'm not good at it. It's for a good cause. I guarantee it'll be fun. Just do it. <laughs> Trust me, please. I'm begging you. What is that again, Leslie? <laughs> yeah, Bruce is unaware, so have what, him sign what, up. Yeah, when, when is that? I uh, oh, I, I've got so many dates going on. That when are one you is, not busy, Bruce? <laughs> November. Let me double check. November fourteenth, I think. I've got two going on, so. Uh, no, uh, October twenty fourth. It must be a Friday. Is it a Friday night? Saturday night. Saturday. Saturday. Yep, Saturday, that's October 24th, 7 p.m. I know Julianne said she was game. She was excited. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's she a did. Thing. You did. You said you would do it. Uh, <laughs> Alex and Zenia yeah, were. I, 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 you know, I added my name if you needed a team member. That's <laughs> yeah, well, I probably can't play on this team. I have to see. I've got many possible teams I might have to play. I'll sort of see who. Um, and with my new job, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to make it. I'm hoping I will be able to, but. Um, the new job will be on a Saturday night. That's yeah. a stupid job. Tuesday through Saturday, <laughs> uh, 7, 10.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and if I switch roles, it might actually end up being to 8 p.m. Oh, well, good luck with that. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a look. I'll, I'll see if I can uh, do that. Great, thanks. Millie? Brian, Brian, I'm Michael, Norm. I'm what? Did you say was that a yes? I'm I'm just concerned that's just about when we're going to be starting to open the restaurant. So that is my only my, my Oh come on. You you're just just playing us now. <laughs> <laughs> well Norm I'll, you, good. I'll order a cup of coffee that morning. And Norm, I'm, you said you wouldn't do it. Lead by example. Come on. <laughs> uh, okay, you've convinced me to think about it. How about that? Yeah, come on. So, Everybody says they're terrible at it. Is it is it general tr trivia or is it Northboro trivia? It'll just be generic trivia, yeah. It's fun. They do, you know, geography or history or politics. It's it's, it's just fun. silly, yeah. good old fun. And you'd be amazed how much useful information you actually possess. <laughs> um, and it's just fun. I mean, it's not, nobody's there to win. You're just there. It's a fundraiser for Rotary. And it's just fun. I mean, what else do you have going on these days? I mean, it's not uh, by point. Zoom, right? It's not like, yeah, it's not like yeah. there are a lot of conflicts these days. Right. All right. Whatever. Okay. Right. I will look <laughs> into it. I'll, I'll take the Bruce, the Bruce shoot approach. I will look into it. Norm, Bruce, Millie. Right. I got to check my social calendar. Julian. How many do you Alex, need on the team? Zenia. What? How many on the team? Uh, can be as many as you want. The only limitation is it's a technical limitation. There can only be a hundred devices with Zoom, um, and the quiz master is one, so we can only have ninety-nine devices. But um, all right. So how does it work to raise funds? Do we pay into to play, or is it just? Yeah, it's a re it's a requested donation, suggested donation of twenty dollars a head to play. Okay. Um, Rotary, we have a Venmo and a PayPal account or checks are fine. Um, and no amount is too small, you know, no barriers to entry. So if you can't afford the 20, you don't have to pay the 20. And if you can afford more and want to, then okay. go for it. It's, it's just kind of a replacement for the street fair. The street fair was our Rotary's biggest fundraiser, like, you know, seven, eight thousand dollars every year. Is, well, is it a, have that this year. Are we allowed to have a uh, wine while we're playing? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> there are no rules. <laughs> I mean, All right. Leslie, so, can we bring bring friends? Like, yeah, I mean, just let me know the only, yeah, so let keep me posted. I mean, if you're together in a physical space, then you can, I'm assuming with friends, you might be distanced, but, um, 
you know, people in your household so you can share a device. Although I've played with you know, like a, done a family game where my kids were downstairs playing and I was upstairs and we were on different teams. Um, I've done other times where I've done a bunch of these where, you know, we're all together in a room and just on one device. So okay, it's okay. flexible. All right. So I see your, your goal is to have a historic district commission team. That's Michael, good. you're talking, but you're on mute. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Norm, I have one other topic if, if we're done talking about trivia. Uh, I, are we done, Leslie? That's fine. Yeah, I'll send an email out again <laughs> and just say this is... <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate everybody's willingness to consider it. <laughs> okay, Michael, it's all yours. Uh, yeah, uh, the board of directors for the Northwood Historical Society met last night, and we... Uh, decided to move forward with an application to the uh, the CPC uh, for restoring the the building um, on May, our building on Main Street, the old Baptist Church. And as part of the application, uh, it looks like we need a letter from the Northboro Historical District Commission uh, giving some kind of community approval for the project or for the application. And I was wondering if that would be something uh, we could at least, uh, well, we'll rec I'm requesting it and hopefully we can get that. The application is due on November 12th. So I was wondering if that was possible to get some kind of a application uh, with that letter attached. Oh, it's a good question, Michael, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the same thing. I'm, I'm kind of helping out on the application a little bit. Uh, the oh, you are? Is, yeah, uh, with um, Rick Frenchek. Right, um, I was talking to him last night. Right, no, and this, this is all good. This is all real good. Um, the way it works is uh, <clears throat> the request for CPA funding is a historical request, a historic preservation request. So the Historical Society has to have input from the Historical District Commission. They have to request, what you're requesting is, is what has to happen. We cannot write that letter until we see the final version of the request. We need okay. to know exactly what's requested. And we also have to have, uh, we'll have to invite the key players on that um, submission to participate in one of our meetings and really walk through the, we have to have a discussion about it. Okay. So more than likely it would be at our November meeting, which okay. would be after your submission date, but that's really not a problem. The, oh, so. the letter can come after the submission date. That's believe me, that is not an issue. Okay. Um, quite certain, Leslie, it, there's some uh, flexibility is when a letter of support comes into the CPC. Um, so I'm actually working on the application as we speak. Yes. I, cre I created the form electronically and I got some input from uh, Rick and I've, uh, I'm, I'm basically working on it. Just before we had this meeting, I was working on it. Uh, would it make sense after we kind of got that thing? So it'll be in a draft form probably within a few days when I get it kind of uh, circulated and approved in from our end, would it make sense to send it around to the folks in the commission to look at it and uh, just to just to get that uh, application in draft form around? Um, I would have preferred to do this differently, but okay. The the we we the commission only wants to see the final version. Oh, okay. okay. However, I'm also working with Rick. So you and I, Michael, should talk a little bit about that application. Okay, good. There's only, there's one key part of that application. You, there's a lot of information. You can build it up with uh, the Historical Society because it's a wonderful feature in town. There's one key thing. We have to describe, we have to uh, clearly define the difference between maintenance and preservation. That's key because if it's maintenance, you won't get a dollar. If it's preservation, you might get all the money. I, I have to send you an email that I sent uh, for Renchek. I found 69 examples where CPA funding was used for some form of painting. 
The kicker now is to go through those examples and find out which ones focused on exterior painting only. Many of them include painting, but it's a huge restoration project that, oh, by the way, we're going to paint the building. This one is pretty much paint the building. So I mean, the, we the, had so the library project was painting. I mean, it's also, it ended up being the roof too, but. Um. That's, it, it was a restoration project that included the roof, some painting, some wall repair. So the, the, the point of to, the, the make the strong case for the society, and that's what they need to bring to us because those are the questions we have to ask. Is, if, is this a maintenance or is this a preservation project? And we, what I found very uh, helpful is to go to the, um, the consortium group, the uh, CP, uh, who's the consortium group? Community Preservation Coalition. The Community Preservation Coalition has a database which includes every funded CPA project in the entire state since 2005, I think. Mm. And you can search that. And that's where I found the 69 that have the word painting in their application. So Michael, I, what I'd like to do then is work with you on that database because okay. the driver is gonna to be to convince the CPC that this is definitely worth funding. And there, are, there may be a lot of other examples that did paint the exterior of buildings and get funding for it. We just have to make sure uh, the CPC likes to see examples in the past of something similar if they're going down a different path. That's kind of okay. All right. So, uh, so you don't think not having the letter attached uh, is the is the kiss of death? No, no. The, the letter can come after the. I, I'm going to propose at the end that we don't have another meeting till the middle of this of, of November, which is after your date that it's due. And that's, believe me, I know how the, I, I was on the CPC for three or four years. Having a letter after the submission is, a, is, is, not, a, is not an issue at all. Okay. Well, um, you know, we had, we had the board of directors meeting last night and uh, we can't, we, I mean, we don't have the funds to do this project, even though we have three quotes oh. and we, that's, kind of it, it, has, it has nothing to do with you having the funds or not. It has to do with the definition of maintenance versus no, I preservation. I, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to downplay what you were saying. I was just simply saying our meeting. You know, we're we're kind of looking at this as one of two other, well, three other possible ways of of getting this painting. Mm. So. And I think the funding, what kind of a dollar value are you looking at? It's like 25000 something it's like 20, that? 20000 20000 yeah. I mean, that's a reasonable price to have a building, you know, upgraded, so. Well, yeah, it's 20000 involves, uh, you know, uh, spray washing and repairing any kind of rotted areas and that kind of stuff. Uh, we're still not planning on doing anything with the shutters. We're going to remove the shutters and then take a look and see what, you know, what kind of uh, carpentry or milling needs to be done to repair that. But that, that's not part of what we asked the contractor to give us a, a number on. So keep in mind, I, I, have to, I have to send you an email. I clearly didn't send you the email that I sent to Rick. Well, I talked I'm, to I'm gonna be honest on this one. Repairing the shutters is a perfect example of restoration. <laughs> That, yep. that is, 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 is a straightforward repair, fix, paint, reinstall. That is absolutely a restoration. And it's kind of odd in my mind that the only thing that's really restoration is not being done. So yep. you voiced that uh, clearly to everyone last night. And, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to move forward with getting the building painted. Yeah. And I think, I think you're, um, your point was was well made, and so that that sounds like it's going to be an add-on at another time. But well, let me. Uh, it's a little awkward because I'm on the commission here, and I'm also participating to help. The yeah, and I, I was going to. You gonna and I add. need to communicate, and and we'll see what we can work with. And I think my feeling is the best the best use of our time right now is to find other CPA projects that funded 
preservation of an old antique building by painting it. And if we can find a half a dozen of those, we can make a case with the CPC that this is done before, it's common practice, it's not a problem, because they have to have, they, the CPC has to have a feeling that they recognize that this is an acceptable project. Um, just keep in mind, there have been lawsuits against, there have been towns where the uh, citizens have taken lawsuits against the CPA, the CPC committee, because they funded projects that were not, that were not, uh, that were not, that don't fall under the guidance of the requirements for CPA funding. So there's legal precedence where if something's not done right, lawsuits are involved. That's why, that's why it's, we just have to really make sure that this has been done before and there's some consistency through the CPA funding requirements. So let me work with you on that on a different, on a different uh, timeline, uh, Michael, because okay. uh, I think together we can put something together that would fly by the CPC. Fair enough. Um, just one other thought was, does that, would that mean that you and I would have to recuse ourselves uh, to be a signatory on this, this letter at all? Or is that? Most that likely, talk? most likely, yes. Okay. Because we'd be too involved in it. But we have five other members on the committee that can write it and the vice, the vice chair can sign the letter. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But I, I think it's a good project. I think the trick is how do we how do we understand how the we can make it fit the criteria of that kind of funding. Understood. Okay. I'm glad you brought it up, Michael. All right. How are we on time? Ooh, not too bad. So these are some other loose ends. The Grange. I happened to go for a walk about three weeks ago and found two young men inside the Grange taking out stuff. So I figured, well, let me find out what's happening here. It was the owner's son and a helper, and they were they were cleaning out some of the project that I didn't realize the Grange is actually an ongoing project. But I did go inside, and they have started to make um, apartments inside. The problem, the challenge, well, the sad part is his father, the owner of the house of the Grange, passed away with COVID about uh, wow. eight weeks ago. I don't know. So uh, the son is responsible for the property and he's not sure what he's gonna do with it. He's not sure if he's gonna continue the work that they've started to make it, to the, keep owning it and make it into apartments or if he's gonna sell it. So that's where the Grange is as of today. Mm -hmm. uh, I put him in touch. He needed to get in contact with some of the people in town hall, like the building inspector and a few other people. I sent him the links in the, in the town planner and I haven't heard from him since then. But um, so the Grange is in a flexible state right now. Mm. But yeah, his father passed away and his father's goal was to move out this way to be with his family. So it's been oh, wow. yeah. it's too bad. Michael, you had sent an email to the, uh, what is it here? The, ar the archeological guru at Mass Historic Commission. Did, you, did he ever get back to you? No, uh, I got, I got nothing. Huh? No, yeah. I was going to use the. I, I just assumed that he's probably on some kind of uh, temporary status due to COVID, and perhaps he wasn't there. But I was going to use the phone number and, and give that a call, but uh, never, never got around to that. You keep uh, pushing the buttons a little bit. I, the, the people from Mass Historical Commission, he's part of that, have been very responsive uh, for me lately. So they're all working from home. Did I CC'd you on that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I try again, because your, your inquiry had to do with all of these architect, and I keep saying architectural, archaeological features in the town of Northborough in the master plan. They said there were like 12, something like that, locations. Yeah. And we were... I'd like to find out where those are. Yeah. I think we all yeah. Because it, it looked as though that last we spoke that um, those were all kind of kept confidential for so people wouldn't go out and ravage through the, uh, the sites. That's correct. But I'm hoping that since we're the Historic District Commission for the town of Northboro, we might yeah. have some priority for some information. Yeah, I, yeah, I need to 
probably give him another call or another email or something. Yeah, give him another shot. See, okay. write him even sometimes the old fashioned letter thing has to work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't give up. Sometimes okay. it takes a few inquiries. Okay, remember we wrote a letter. Um, there was a nomination for the Gale Store for Preservation Massachusetts Award. And if you remember, I wrote a letter. I get all you guys to say it was the right thing to do back three months ago. They won the award. So the wow. Gale Store is one of the award winners for the Preservation Massachusetts uh, 2020 uh, awards. Hmm. Usually they have, this is like everybody else, they usually have their big money maker in Boston at a huge hotel. Uh, I think it's like $500 a chair to sit in the room and they give out the awards and it's a big PR thing for them and they can't do that this year. So they're doing everything virtual. Um, I don't have the information on how they're doing the exact giving away the award, but um, when, I, when I know more, I'll forward it to you. Because the Historic District Commission is a member of the, um, we signed up last year to be members of Preservation Massachusetts. Yeah. And there's two awards. We have one particular award, which really has to do with bringing a lot of teams together to do work on a project. The other award is called the uh, Citizens Award. So I just got the notice that we're also included in the Citizens Award, which is a uh, people vote to what their favorite project is. I got the notification for it, but they have not for another two weeks will they tell us how we can vote. And I'm curious to know if we all get to vote since we are all members of Preservation Massachusetts, since we're all part of the commission. So if I know more, I'll let you know. Hmm. So that's there's a woman at the community advocate working on an article for that. Uh, for that. So it's been a bunch of good news the last few weeks. Yeah. yeah. I have a, a news story. I don't know if anybody saw this. Um, kind of interesting, though. Tugas Farm in Northborough was uh, identified in USA World, USA News. Uh, USA Today, I think. Is USA Today, that's right. Uh, as number six best farm in the country. Whoa. Kind of interesting. Yeah, it was very cool. Wow, the country? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Massachusetts. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. I sent it to my niece who was visiting from Syracuse. She was passing through. And so I sent it to her. She said, oh, well, number one on the list is right down the street from me. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> was that uh, there was sixth best? Is that? Yeah. Sixth best, yes. Sixth best, in, wow. In the country. That's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. A little old North, bro. Huh. Yeah. Check that out. Let's see. Um... Millie, I know you had asked me about the open meeting law because it was on one of the agendas, I think the January agenda and it was never addressed. Mm. Um, I, I had to go back and scratch my head. I remember now in late January or early February, there was a uh, meeting. It was before we had all this shenanigans with the Zoom. It was a live meeting in the library where someone came in and gave some presentation on open meeting law. And uh, I found it really interesting. I couldn't find my notes. I'm really disappointed. But we all had to sign. It's almost every year we have to sign that we've read the open meeting law. And I, I know if Brian uh, Swanson, did you have you done that before? Because you've been on other committees in the town. I did it um, a year or so ago when I first joined this group. Okay. So I think we're, we're probably all covered then. I just remember there were a couple of things that, that women spoke about with some examples. And when I do find my notes, I'll, I'll bring them up. But it's mainly to make sure we all knew the, that and the ethics uh, rules are clear in our mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I should have done this earlier, but it's nice to have Millie and Brian as voting members of the commission now. Ooh, that yeah. worked out really well, yes. <laughs> All right. I'm looking forward to it. Julianne, did you want to say a minute or two about White Cliffs? Because you were in the same meeting I was at. Um, well, it, you know, you can add to this, Norm. Um, 
we we got an update on all of the repairs basically is what the meeting was about the the roof of course has been done um a contractor has been hired to do frames for the uh stained glass that are in storage uh the the chimney repairs are being evaluated and um I think the biggest thing is that actually we're meeting September 22nd at 10 a.m. to, and, and we'll hear from the architect more about those kinds of details, but of more reuse options. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, that's it. Oh, and the, the dormer, the dormer on the roof is being repaired. Yeah. Um, so a lot has been done, oh, you know, over the spring and summer. Uh, we. This was the first time we had met since what, since February? Yes, February. Yeah, but it's, so that was all good news. And I think that one big, big hurdle now to look at is how to separate the addition from the building in a cost-effective way so that that addition is not hurting the inside of the historic part of the building. Right. So this is this is all part of a of a to do list regarding uh, securing the building, mm -hmm. and there was um, in the end we did have they do have the money to do all of the securing that they want to do. Originally we thought that we might not have enough of a budget for that, but very strange. The good fortune is because of the pandemic, the prices for having contracting work done was uh, more reasonable now. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Is is that um, next meeting? open meeting something that the public can join in on or is it just well, a it's the same kind of a style as this will be i don't no it's not, uh, there won't be room for public comments yep i understand okay and the last topic is our next meeting how do we want to do this going forward um okay. Hey, Norm, uh, yep. there's, a, there's a topic in there for mail. Is there no mail? I have not seen any mail. My personal opinion is we should meet as often as we need to, just like we, I don't think the fact that we're meeting by Zoom should affect the frequency of meeting. Mm -hmm. so. so we have a couple of options on that. Let me get... Uh, Bruce made a good point. He said there might be a way where we can automatically get these meetings set up. Um, the Zoom ones aren't, they seem relatively straightforward, but if we have to have a meeting with some public comment, then that's a different ball game. It's a different software. Uh, let me see if I can find an email we get just the other day. Uh, it's still Zoom. With public comment, I don't know. No, it, it, it's, it's, I, I think it's a scheduling, there's more of a scheduling problem when you have to have public comment. Oh, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is, I'm gonna read it verbatim. This is from Diane Wackel uh, yesterday because, because she was involved in the email. You actually, you probably all saw this, but I'm gonna read it anyway. She says, uh, the idea of pre-scheduling makes perfect sense but because we have limited Zoom licenses, we are asking that boards and committees only schedule meetings as needed, unless you definitely plan to meet on a specific night of each month. They can schedule meetings up to three months in advance. Yeah, I think she was saying not limit when we meet. I think she was just saying, be careful not to set up a series because it may end up using licenses and we may not end up meeting. So maybe we would book for six months and only meet three of those times and we'd be wasting three licenses. So I, I don't think, I don't think they're trying to control how often we meet. Just, I think that was specifically about the series. That was my impression. Mm -hmm. So do we, um, let me think for a second, because this is something that might come up. Uh, I'm trying to remember some things. Um, so, when we have the historical society come in to review their CPA requests, I don't know if that happens. If that has to be an open meeting, or if that can be a regular Zoom meeting with regular with the logistics participants. I have to find that out because that changes the dynamic of the call. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the reason is I'm trying to understand this because if we're trying to if we try to schedule three three months in advance, if we can, some of those months might be a regular Zoom meeting, and some might be the webinar meeting, which is a different. I mean, way. I don't see a real benefit to scheduling in advance. I mean, it was just if it's just getting the email the information out to people. I don't think it's. Mm -hmm. I would just do one of those as we, as we go each time. But that's just me. Um. Well, let's let's get everybody's input. We can, you know, we went four months without a meeting. That wasn't good. Then we went two months without a meeting because we skipped, uh, gave our month, we get August off so we could enjoy August, I guess. Um, let's get a, just a feedback. Do you want to meet in October? That's the next month. Do you think it's, uh, you know, usually, usually our meetings are productive and we get some things done. So it's not like it's a waste of time. Um, do I have a feeling to meet in October or wait till November? Well, I'd like to meet in October so we could possibly get this letter uh, resolved and uh, submitted as part of the application, if that's possible. I don't, I don't know if we have to have a full meeting, but if, if that's an item on the agenda, that would be helpful for us to submit that. Now, you said it doesn't matter if the letter comes after. So I guess from that standpoint, it's not critical, but... I, I understood the date as November 12th as a the submission date. So, yeah, at this point, the, I mean, your submission, as Norm said, it's more of a, it's a placeholder at that point. They will, they all evolve. So it's, yeah. it's just sort of. I don't know if you all realize that Leslie is now the member on uh, the Historic District Commission member on the CPC. So, okay. Maybe it's your third year, isn't it, Leslie, now? Well, you've been on uh, it. Yeah, yeah you, I think it's been, it's been a, yeah, I think two years, maybe. Yeah, but you were on previously for another committee. I was not, actually. I was not. Oh, I thought you were on before. All right, well, that's good. And I think Millie, did I see Millie that you're the planning board rep now? Yeah. Oh, that's right, Millie's on the planning board. So we got, uh, you've got some, you've got some very good people. <laughs> no, but she's on the CPC. She's the planning board rep to CPC. It was Anthony yeah. Zeiton, and now it's, now it's Millie. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so there's a reason, there's a reason to meet in October, um, you know, we can do that. I'll have to just find out how if that requires an open meeting format or the standard uh, Zoom meeting format. Is everybody good with an October meeting? Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I think it would be good because then we can also look over the list of the projects and maybe uh, do some thinking on that about what we what some of our goals might be, or um, you know, again to start with what the master plan is looking at as well. Okay, so I'm looking at an October calendar and it would be October 21st. Yep. Third Wednesday. Again, the only issue with me will be I am, this job is till seven and there's a chance that I'll end up switching to a role where I need to be working till eight. I'll have to see if there's possible, possible that I will be able to switch my hours on certain given days. But, um, so it's possible that I will have to be absent for a while. This is kind of an indefinite, it's a temporary gig, but indefinite right now. Okay. It's COVID related, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be with us for a while, that's for darn sure. Well, other than that, there's only one other thing on the agenda and uh, unless you wanna still keep looking at our, each other's faces, we could move along. <laughs> <laughs> We can't do anything unless someone makes a motion. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is that? That sounds good. That sounds good. Second. A second. Oh, Bruce got yeah, it. The Leslie. <laughs> I and... think Bruce got it. Bruce. Well, Bruce is writing the minutes, so he can decide which one of us got it. <laughs> so, got to do the old roll call thing. So. This is in regards to adjoining the meet, adjourning the meeting. Mike. Uh, approved, yes. <laughs> Leslie. Absolutely. Bruce. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Millie. Yes. Mr. Swanson. Ready to go. Hey, you left early. <laughs> so uh, we're all good to go. We that was uh Enough of us voted. We're closing off the meeting. It was good to see you all. Great Likewise. to see you. Same here, Thank, you. 
And Mike, I'll Let's contact you, you. I'll send you an email in about five minutes. Okay. All right. Yep. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Be healthy. Yes. You too. Healthy. Thank you, John. I think everything went smooth tonight. Hi, right, you're welcome. My good pleasure. Yep. We'll see you next month then. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.